Hey guys, it's Chris, and uh, after working with all these Sensitivo electronics, I figured I'd better clean off my desk. There you go. Uh, once again, I am sorry for the person I super triggered with the Make Amiga Great Again hat. Uh, sorry about that, but it stays now. So, the last time we checked in with this turd, we were, uh, I'm going to replace this, doesn't match, not the right cover, cover, we put it back together, I think I had it working, I forget, we got some upgrades for it, we got the SCSI interface, got to get this messed up Super Turbo 28 working, uh, but since it was a 2, oh, whatever the hell ROM, got this package from Amiga on the Lake, yep, I bought yet another ROM, and, uh, digital thing from the guys, Aaron and Jeff. You always give great instructions. Check them out, Amiga on the Lake. Dot com. You always get a handwritten thanks. Happy holidays. It's a little late, but I'm getting there. 47 US dollars. Not bad at all. I do want to get this apart again, and we're going to also be hooking up this dude this is that RPI zero two weird thing I soldered together and we're going to be taking a look at that so we can get some HDMI based clearer RGB video out of his, out of this. It's not going to be like high res but it'll be high res in terms of HDMI. It's still going to be in the crappy screen mode. We'll see what we can do like multi-scan and see if we can kind of trick it. If it works that'll be like kick butt. I also got these dudes from RetroBench.com there. Uh, they got themselves a website to sell capacitors and all sorts of things. Got these on the e-booger. I do have to solder these in. See, I really don't feel like it, so I probably won't right now. Okay, so in order to get this working in an Amiga 2000, it's pretty simple. First, Forget where you put the part. This has a new ROM and a new CPU socket. We saw that before. So here she is. This is for, uh, this is a hat that goes on this sucker. And well, it's in there now. Uh, it's like a big 90, right? So this goes into your Denise chip, right? The pin one will be up here. So that'll be like that side. And it's gonna sit over top of Paula. Hence why I did the upper thing. This little magic hat here is for your click or click button. So it uses that mini HDMI, not the micro, but like mini HDMI. There you go. It's got two USB-ish things looking for power, but we don't need it because it's going to grab it off the rail. Uh, pin one is this way. Pin one on Denise is that side. So this is Denise. This is her friend Paula. Display and audio. Just give it a pull out. Boom, you won't bet any pins or nothing. You can just plop that down there. Note the orientation of the little cutout thing. So it's gonna sit in here like this. Make sure you're all lined up before you go giving this thing a tug. These are machine fit pins. She's angled over top, so she goes right over top of that. Probably with the solder so high, the power supply is just gonna crush it right on top of it. But we're gonna see that in a second. Then your Denise goes back in. She's machine pinned, so make sure you have it all lined up before you go plowing down with excessive pressure. Boop, there we go. So that sits on there like that. I'm gonna test fit the old power supply on top, and I'm gonna check for clearance here, Clarence, because if you stick this down, the bottom's right here. We got some solder blobs right here. What do we got? Let's uh, stir up. Oh, yeah, you're going to have some issues here. I don't know if you can see this, but... Yep, she's touching. The most important part after putting all that in there is to remember that you forgot to plug in your mini HDMI cable, and you have to take it all back out anyway. could just route it out like the back side here. I don't know what I'm doing yet. Now, for s and Gs, I'm just going to stick this over top for now. 
And considering that the only thing I'm using on this is the floppy drive, it'd be nice if it went right through that center hole where the ribbon cables come up, but it doesn't. Let's rehook up our floppy uh, doohicular, like so. Plug in the old power adapter. Oop. And that's good enough. So, with doing nothing besides that and taking all cards out, let's see what the hell happens. Raspberry Pi boots faster than the than the Amiga does. I don't know. Maybe not it does. I don't know. I put the latest image on here. Does it even work? Why not? It does work. Cool. Look at that. It didn't do nothing. So, it takes a little bit to kind of get going. I guess if you're running, let me turn it off again. Plug the keyboard in here. So we're going to turn it on. I do need to hook up the dual post button for selection and whatever. And that's 1900 by 1200 HDMI. Look how freaking clear that is. I can't tell you how clear that is. Well, you can see how clear that is. I, don't, I, can, I can tell you all you want. Uh, so what we're going to do, I hate to do this, but I own it. This is my boxed copy of Cannon Fodder. Compatible with A500, 500 plus, 1500, 2000, 600, 1200. Requires 1 mega RAM. Supports extra RAM above 1 memory. Whoa. That was in English. I'm sorry. Extra memory above 1 megabyte is supported. I just kind of read everything backwards. So this is brand new. And it comes with a bullet keychain. There's like a... You haven't seen this. And this is useless information. But check this out. There's a 7.62 by 39. Whoops. <laughs> that's, that's never been dropped until now. And she says cannon fodder on it. I thought it was like a 3030 or something that they'd use, but nope, it's a 7.62. I even have my receipt in here. Check this out. This is old dot matrix printer paper from work. Let's see. Uh la 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 la. $25, I bought this on a check, and it was uh, January 25th, 1994, I bought this at work. So, pretty neat. I try to keep the receipts in my boxes, but what I'm going to do is something I never do. I'm going to take the original bag, and I'm going to put one of these cannon fodder discs in here. I hope this disc drive is good, because... Doesn't really matter. I have eight copies of this game. Three, two, can of fire, disc one. Let's see how it works. I don't have any audio hooked up. So I don't have to worry about a copyright on that. She's uh she's blinking red. This has one mega RAM and that's it. This is also stock 7.16 megahertz NTSC. Gotta look a little off because of the NTSC. This is a PAL game. It's like everything is. We got a book. There's a hidden a little dude in here. See, we're missing the bottom here and, and never the same color mode. Holy God, 7 megahertz is slow take things for granted. But once you're in, you're in. Wow, I gotta get that in PAL. I usually do the double finger. And I can set all this through that uh, little little dude, little HDMI Pi Zero thing. If I need to update the code, just download the new off GitHub. Get, get, yeah, GitHub. And, uh, hey. Now it's got to load discs again. So used to WHD load. So now we're cooking with bacon and we got all the pieces back together. We're going to give her a turn on. And I'll probably have no mouse. So I'm just going to do the right thing and reboot it again from the start. We got the low high reset. 
Uh, something will happen in a second. Hard drive will load. Pi's loaded. Loaded a little faster this time. I guess it wrote some magic to the card. Don't know. Still 7 megahertz. Still going to suck eggs. But it's going to reload Kickstart 314 off my Kickstart re-kick thing that I did the last time that I forgot I even did it. Been a busy month. But we have an actual ROM for it now. Even though I legally own the software four, five, six times. Got enough discs though. That's cool. I don't know where you guys are getting these DSDD discs from. That's awesome. Great job. Maybe Hyperion has like a stockpile of them or something. So once again, 7 megahertz. I just want to see if I can do... Uh... Oh no, this is Workbench 3.1. I'm sorry. So many Amigas. We're going to go into DHO. Look how crystal clear this looks. I mean, look at this. I don't know if the camera's going to do justice, but... This is nice and clear. I mean... Clear. For an Amiga, can I even zoom in on this? Like, clear. Get out of here, Virus Z. Alright, let's go into prefs, because I'm running out of RAM just opening a window here. Because it's Now, here's a problem. I don't have a bar. I have to do the overscan down a little bit. So, we're going to do overscan. And I'm going to edit the graphics size here and just drop this down a tick. Just to see if I can get the menu bar to show up. There we go. Shut up, Virus Z. You can actually just quit. Alright, so with that we can see here, I have to play with the menu system a little bit. Let's, I think multi-scan is going to be the ticket. Now, we're going to reboot again to get the screen mode available. This will flip that sucker to a 31 kilohertz. I don't think it's going to work, but I think... Uh -huh. I won't do multi-scan. Get out, Virus Z. NTSC high res, low res, pal, high res, low res. Monitors. Multi-scan. That's all you got, brother. Take that pal and just delete her. Let's go to uh, assist storage on third. And we'll take NTSC even though I don't know if it's there and just copy it. Just in case I delete it. Wonder why multi-scan won't show up. I guess because it's the OCS chipset you deal hole. But this is awesome for a uh original chipset Amiga using an HDMI board on a Raspberry Pi Zero with that little board I got off PCB Way for like five bucks eighteen dollars in parts from Mauser and about a half hour of my time soldering that sucker in and now you can buy them people are selling them pre-soldered thirty forty bucks it's worth it if you don't have a soldering skill knock yourself out I mean that's the way to go oh, Virus Z come on a little bit of lag there look I'm going to drag, if I'm slow, just the first catch. Boop. But then, you know, oh, this CPU is just trash. going to have to really play around with the numbers here, because it's just, like, when you first turn it on, you see the... Maybe, if it catches it. I think it's, ru it's faster now, because... The Pi had some code written to it. Okay, there it goes. So, scaling is auto integer. You can set options up. I gotta hook up a double pull button on that thing. But there we go. That's the HDMI Raspberry Pi mod on an Amiga 2000. I got some more work to do to this. I just wanted to toss that in there real quick. That turned out to be really long. It's like 11 o'clock at night. And uh, I cleaned my desk off, so I figured, why not film another Amiga video? You should go to bed, but I don't. I don't know why. Anywho, it's not Saturday, June fifth, twenty nineteen. This has no battery in it, and but that's a good. That's a good year. Maybe I don't know. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.